Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at uh, one special aspect of Rotary and that is the foundation and what the foundation does. Rotary Foundation helps contribute and do projects worldwide, humanitarian projects. Uh, estimated value of that is close to maybe a half a billion dollars. And each year these funds are um, part of the donations that Rotarians actually contribute each year. Part of the job that the Rotary Foundation does is not only administer these funds, but also is responsible for making sure that those funds are spent wisely. In other words, there's no corruption, no mishandling of funds, anything like that. One of the ways that the Foundation does this is through what's called the Rotary Foundation Cadre. A Cadre is a technical expert in specific areas of the Rotary Foundation. Their job specific is to monitor and maintain these projects, take a look at the grants and see how in fact they're being handled and if there are changes that occur. Being a volunteer saves quite a bit of money so the foundation itself does not have to administer these funds through a, a staff, staff people. Volunteers on this, on this way in this hand are able to then take a look at, maintain and make sure that things are done without any cost to the Rotary Foundation. We are going to take a look at, first of all, uh, the first slide I have is a picture showing the six areas of focus. These six areas of focus have to do with, uh, on the next slide, water and sanitation, basic education, community and economic development, child and maternal health, disease prevention, and peace and conflict resolution. Now there are about 500 cadres worldwide, and these cadres each have one specific area that they work with. I've been fortunate to have been selected to take care of and monitor water and sanitation and community and economic development in English and Spanish speaking countries. And that is my specific role. The first picture that we show of a building and structure was a project that we did for community and economic development. It's a small village of about 200 people. And this picture shows a before and after shot. The picture on top is a picture of a school that was later develop into a community center. Now what's interesting about the Rotary Foundation is that the Rotary Foundation will not fund buildings. In other words, you cannot put money for a grant into a building. And the reason for that is because there were times in, in the past where those funds were mishandled. People were actually doing projects, building homes, houses, hospitals, things like that. Unfortunately, what happened then uh, the corruption came in and they would actually sell these things for profit. So the Rotary Foundation and those people that did that had nothing to show for themselves. And so that's why one of the areas is that we as cadres take a look at and make sure that there's no conflicts that could potentially occur with Rotarians being uh, involved with the funding portion of that and also with the project itself. The next picture I have shows a picture of a water uh, system. And these are pretty prevalent. We do a lot of water systems around the world Basically, there are about 80% of the people around the world right now do not have access to clean drinking water. And that is one of the first reasons for that. The next picture shows a, a before and after shot. In other words, before, the gentleman on top, his name is Bernardo Ramos, who works with a water foundation in the Mexico area, shows a before and after. And in the bottom, a gentleman, a Rotarian, his name is Juan Mao. Uh, he actually put in these systems himself. I was involved with doing both of these systems and to this date there's about 200 of these water systems done throughout the Mexico area. Now what's unique about water and sanitation and one of the reasons why I focus on that is that if you start with water as the first source, in other words the first area of it, you'll find that everything falls in place after that. If you have good water, good sanitation, you will then find that the health is improved and through health being improved then the economy boosts up because now people aren't as dependent on having to look for water and fund water themselves. That is now one of the things that they have in their infrastructure. The next picture I have is um, a child and maternal health um, clinic. This is actually a health clinic project there where I went into a, an indigenous vi village in the Mexico area. And this village specific, I found that 25% of the people in this village were suffering from diabetes, which is a very high number, uh, as, as you would well imagine. We first put in a water system there, and we found that through water and putting the water system in place, that the diabetes dropped from the 25% to about 8 or 9%, which was, uh, in first I thought was pretty astounding, until I realized that for them, the cost of water 
was probably three times more than the cost of actually buying a soda. So they were drinking soda and eating candy, which was cheaper than actually buying food and drinking normal water. And that's what led to that. Now, since that time, the uh, economy there has substantially improved. The next picture I show is a picture uh, in the mountainous areas of Mexico again. This is uh, above Salamanca, Mexico, central portion of Mexico, where the building behind you is actually a school. And part of what we do with the sister districts, um, we uh, partner in with a number of different districts, is to find these areas and see if, in fact, we could help. So this became an education part of it. You see the building, but you don't see the roof of it. This actually had, uh, was a school with no roof. And so you could imagine what would happen to the books, things like that, that were left inside the classrooms. They were actually no books at all. So part of it was putting a roof on, and the other part was actually doing water in this project and later on, uh, we did a solar lights where each of these village uh, people, the families would have light at night instead of having to depend on candlelight or actually fires themselves. So that was another part of the community and economic development uh, component. The next picture I have is uh, a project that we did. This is uh, actually a project for, for the Jaws of Life where we put, brought in the Jaws of Life as one of the projects to help develop some of the infrastructure within these specific communities. Now, in Mexico, it's interesting. The fire department, uh, fire people are all volunteer service. The people that work in the uh, enforcement, law enforcement, most of them are also on a volunteer basis. And the only time that you will have, for example, the jaws of life is if it comes through a Red Cross. Now, Red Cross, they, um, their territories are more of the interstates, but very little of their efforts are actually put within the communities. And that's why fire departments, um, use of fire equipment, jaws of life, things like that become part of a community uh, effort. And that's why we take a look at inventorying out specific tools that they could use within each of these communities. Otherwise, uh, it's all volunteer basis. The next picture that I have is a picture of a, um, a well, a well site. And this well site is um, one of those projects that we did in Honduras. And one of the areas that the foundation is keen on is in these specific areas. Now, one of the previous shows, we had uh, Kim Lorenz talking about some of the projects that we had done with um, the World Vision Program. These projects, as we take a look at them, the cadre's responsibility is to make sure if, in fact, there is sustainability, if the money is being funded correctly, being spent properly, and to make sure that that community has a buy-in process. Because without the buy-in of these projects, uh, they will not succeed. They will not be sustainable. So that was one of the first things we as cadres take a look at. The next picture I have is a picture of a drilling rig. This one, again, is in the Honduras area. And there are areas specific in uh, Honduras that even though there's a lot of water, the water becomes seasonal. And oftentimes, these communities, uh, the water goes down a river and is grossly contaminated. And that's why wells become one of the crucial elements of bringing water to these areas. They don't have seasonal water. They have water that is now coming from an aquifer, which is uh, considerably safer. Uh, in other words, there's very few um, problems with pollution, if at all. The next picture shows a picture of one of the well sites that I had to take a look at. And you'll notice that this was a well that was uh, drilled in. It's about 300 feet deep. Unfortunately, um, this system failed. So part of my job is to see why it failed and if, in fact, this well could be brought back to, quote, life. In this situation, in this instant, we took a look at the water itself. The uh, hydrology study showed that there was water down, uh, just had not gone down far enough. So adding another 50 feet to that well actually produced enough water to where it was becoming a, it became a successful well. And that's what we take a look at, one of the cadre's jobs. The next picture that we have, we take a look at, is another dry, dry well. And unfortunately for this instance, um, it was based on a poor location. This well was um, to be drilled in an area where there actually was no water. And it was evident that the uh, hydrologists had not done their job. It was just uh, punched in the ground. They went down about 350 feet and hit no water at all, so they filled it back up. One of the uh, issues that we had with this system was that there was no guarantee on that. So um, the foundation, in this um, instance, actually had to go back 
and take a look at recontracting for a new well in a different location. This one here specific was in a school site. The next picture is a picture of um, one of the meetings. As cadres, we have to take a look at doing meetings within the community, getting information, collecting data, making sure that if in fact we have ownership and to see why and how the project will be implemented and implemented correctly and if in fact there is a high value to it. I put this picture in because uh, this was probably one of the more touching sites that I had to visit. Um, we are talking here, the lady in the center is one of the people working with us at one of the cooperating organizations. She had been working there for about a year and a half. The village itself was a, um, a village that just happened to pop up. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, a bunch of nomads literally came in and did some homesteading, some settling in this area. The water was uh, seasonal water. And when I say tragic, uh, it was this specific site that it came to where uh, we were reported that uh, three infants had died because of bad water, uh, most of them from dehydration having to do with uh, diarrhea. So uh, it very touching. And that's one of the areas where we will definitely be putting a well in to try and help these people out. And again, one of the touching areas and one of the things that hit you at home and you decide, well, you're doing the right thing. The next picture is a picture of a school. And at the school, part of what we do is to make sure that we maintain the uh, education and understanding of these projects, how these projects come about and how they work. Uh, each of the schools and each of the uh, education components all have a different element to it. This one here was uh, one of the more creative ones. They're actually singing a song about the, the good of water and what water does. And they're talking about hygiene and health and how they uh, are able to do, through the song, the different things to make sure that they uh, maintain proper hygiene. The next picture is a picture, uh, again, of, of another school. And at this school, they actually did a skit where they talk about water, what, what the right way to handle water is, what the wrong way to handle water is, and how that works out. Again, part of the clever way of children being educated through the process. One of the jobs that I have as a cadre is, again, to meet with each of the communities. This next picture shows uh, a group meeting where I'm meeting with the people that are involved with the uh, water committee. And the water committee here specifically is in charge of uh, monitoring, maintaining, and making sure that all of the systems are set in place in all of the homes uh, within that specific community. This group here was responsible for about 108 different families having water, clean water. And they're giving me the report back, telling me the benefits. I'm getting a report back on health, hygiene, how it's being implemented, how it's being successful and working out, and also what they have planned uh, in the future and how they're going to be able to then complete this and maybe assist other communities outside of the area, again, with some of the process. The next picture is uh, a picture of myself giving one of the reports. We talk about how it works out, the successes that we've had, and also in that I'm in charge of actually monitoring through and evaluating the benefits that come to each of these communities. And so that is part of uh, my job. This specific project uh, was, was pretty interesting because at that place and time, I had no idea how many people were being uh, serviced by the system. It took us four and a half hours to get to this location on top of the mountains in Honduras. The next picture shows part of the successes. Uh, this is uh, one of the homes that we were taking a look at. Their job that they have is uh, coffee beans. They harvest coffee beans, grow and harvest coffee beans and we're taking a look at the system that they use. The lady in the back is one of the proud owners and she's uh, had the privilege now of seeing her life change because water from these wa uh, water projects is now in the family. They are healthier, stronger, and now they can go out and start doing uh, projects, projects as this is the case with uh, growing coffee. The next picture is uh, another community center where we uh, took a look at and we talked to the people of that community the gentleman in the center is a Rotarian, and he's telling about how the project came about. Part of the uh, interesting story of this one that I have to share with you is that when I got there, again, this was probably five hours by dirt road up on top of a mountain. A uh, very poor community. Before this time of having water, they had nothing there but the spring water. Uh, and again, this was one of the communities that had grossly contaminated water. The kids that you see there, probably 70, 80% of them were sick on a daily basis. Well, when they 
heard that I was coming, they made a special deal and they actually cooked chicken chow mein for me, <laughs> not knowing that I was Japanese, not Chinese, but they actually went through and cooked this meal for me uh, in my honor. So we had chicken chow mein for, for lunch there and that was a well, very touching moment. I was actually quite surprised and probably one of the best uh, chow mein, chicken chow mein I ever had, so that was kind of nice. The next picture I have shows a girl that was uh, from one of the villages. And to, to see the girl and knowing that she now has the clean water, she has education, she's going to have a much better life because of what Rodu was able to do with the foundation funds. As a cadre, these are some of the things we get to see. Uh, we don't have to work as hard with doing the grant process as much as we do monitoring and seeing those things that benefit. What she has in her hand is a cricket. It's a small cricket, actually it's a large cricket. Uh, I saw some of these being uh, trained on leashes where they actually fly these things around. And that cricket is so noisy, you wouldn't believe it. It sounds like a car starting up. One of the lo loudest things I've ever heard. And it came from this little cricket that they uh, train and have around their house. The next picture I have is a picture of a rotary club. This was one of the rotary clubs in Honduras. And being a cadre, uh, oftentimes, you know, you're, you're looked on as somebody that is either high in authority, as in too high in authority, or somebody that is actually somebody out there to benefit the clubs and Rotary. This group here actually took me in. Uh, it's a Rotary club in Honduras, and they, they welcomed me in, in open arms. They were welcome uh, or happy to show off the projects that they had done there. So this is some of the benefits that we have in Rotary, is working with these different groups, these different organizations, meeting people, Rotarians around the world, that have the same passion, this passion to help people out, to make a difference in the world. And that is one of the fascinating areas of Rotary. As a cadre, we definitely get to see this because we get to see a project that's had successes. Unfortunately, there's been a few that have not, but then overall, that it's always for the right reason, for, for the good reason. The next picture I have here shows a picture of a one of the Rotarians, a gentleman to uh, your right, uh, was a, is a Rotarian, and he invited me. He said, wait, I want you to come and meet my, my wife and my family. So I gladly joined him, and fortunately for me, uh, 80, 90 degrees in Honduras, they don't make me wear a coat and tie there. But he invited me in. I went there to his house, and there was a big party going on, and I did not realize what the deal was until I actually got there, that he wanted me to meet his family, and this was the day before uh, a family wedding was to occur, so I met his entire family, all the relatives and everybody. And that is one of the areas where Rotary actually touches you close. You know, you find out how big this family of Rotary really is. And how a gentleman that I had not even met maybe a week before that time would take me in and treat me as one of his family, as one of his own. And that is one of the advantages of Rotary. Being a, a member of the cadre uh, has given me those specific opportunities. I've traveled a number of times around the world, and in doing this, uh, I, I've seen all, all the great that Rotary does. Now, cadres, uh, there again, only about 500 of us. Our job specific is to make sure that the funds that the Rotarians are putting into the foundation uh, are spent wisely. Now, realizing that money given to the foundation for every dollar you give to the foundation, when I say give, it's a contribution to the foundation, in three years' time, 93% of that money will come back to, to Rotary and in the form of funding these grants. And so for cash, you have matching funds that this is the mature money that you get will be used for these specific projects. And that's why it's important that as Rotarians, we know that the money is being spent wisely. We know that it's an investment in humanity, and we also know that the sustainability component also becomes a large part of why we do these projects. As a cadre, um, we are volunteers. We get our travel expenses covered, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the rest of it is all volunteer time. So we, in fact, become volunteers for Rotary and the Rotary Foundation. There are, in our district, there have been only two cadres, myself and a gentleman named Jan Lindsay, who was uh, instrumental in starting GoCare and the foundations that are b is being used to fund projects in Nicaragua. But the two of us right now have, have only been the last, uh, the only two. Each district probably has about one, maybe two cadres. And this is, in a, in a way, fortunate, but in another way, very unfortunate. 
because it's the cadre's job to make sure that they uh, take a look at all of these projects and make sure that there's no corruption being done or anything like that. The first thing we take a look at in, in paperwork is to take a look at all of the documents. And the documents are usually in the form of the grants and the way the grants are written. We have to evaluate the grants, the strength of the grant, the way it's being written, even before it's being implemented in. And the strength of that written grant becomes the strength of the project itself. And so that's why we take a look at that first. One of the areas we look at has to do with the conflict. And unfortunately, in the past, we have seen conflict and mishandling of funds. And that's why that becomes the first component of the project itself. We have to make sure that there's no direct link, direct rel relationship, or anything within the project itself and where the areas are being funded. The next thing we take a look at is, in fact, the, the way it's being projected. In other words, the project being handled itself. Is the project something that is going to be implementable, something that could be installed, something that will have no real problems? If we see problems that could potentially occur, we would then make recommendations, how to change that, what to make the difference on, what could be done better to improve that project to make sure that's going to uh, progress correctly. The next thing is an on-site location, where we take a look at projects being done on-site in process and to see if there's uh, issues, items that could be improved, items that need to be addressed, if in fact it is benefiting the community itself or if it's being done strictly for those people that are funding it. So we have to take a look at that. Buy-in becomes crucial. Buy-in and ownership of those people we help is one area that's often overlooked but is the most important component of that. Without ownership of the communities doing these projects, you don't have the sustainability. In other words, it's a handout, and it becomes a handout. And they expect that a gift is a gift. There's no value to it. And that's why we make sure that the gift is a gift of sustainability. The last part is we take a look at the grant itself and the project and see if, in fact, the outcome of that project was matching with the intent of the grant and the way it was written. So if we have a grant that was written and all of the points were met or exceeded, then we know for in fact that we had done a good grant. About six years ago, Rody Foundation did a changeover. They did what was called a Future Vision project. It was a Future Vision pilot and 100 of the 534 uh, districts were put into this pilot. And the implementation of the pilot project was to see if, in fact, the districts could then administer these grants easier than the foundation. And the idea would be that then the foundation would be relieved of some of the duties and be relieved of some of the expenses in administering these things. And it would then fall back to the district itself. That was three years ago that that pilot actually completed. So what we took a look at, one of the cadre assignments that I had, was to take a look at that pilot project to implementation. So the last three years have actually been implementing what was developed through this pilot project. And to see if, in fact, this project and the plan actually matched up. In other words, was it as successful in planning as it is in implementation? And so we took a look at that. That was one of the reports that I did back um, probably last year sometime. Taking a look at that and seeing with my report if, in fact, these all matched up and areas where we can improve because it's constantly changing. The way we do projects, the way we do grants, the way we fund all of these things is constantly changing because we try and improve it as we go along. One of the other areas that we did most recently that I studied was the one on sustainability. And sustainability is basically, well, it is. It's all about the project itself and how that is handled. The project becomes sustainable only if the, the ownership of that community is able to sustain this thing for, for future. We are looking at 10 years out, 15, 20 years out. And oftentimes, projects don't fit within this model, and those are the ones that we usually aren't being uh, approved or implemented. Sustainability is something where not only is the project successful, but the steps forward. I talked about water as uh, one example of that. For having clean water, then improves the life and lives of these people that have now and now have clean water. But that also then goes into not only health, but then education. Because now families won't have parents and mothers staying home to take care of kids that are sick. They are able to go out and work. 
the kids now could go to school now on a daily basis rather than staying home because they were ill or sick. So now their education is improved. The parents are making more money because now they're working uh, on a regular basis. And as that then expands out, now you have commercial element coming in. And that changes things too. Credit, microcredit, things like that now, uh, now are able to be put in place. And Honduras is a prime example of that because with water now, the companies that are growing uh, coffee beans, things like that, or different agricultural fruits, now could come into these areas and know that they have a workforce willing to work for them in these areas. And I've seen mountains that are cleared. Unfortunately, <laughs> they are cleared, but that becomes part of the, um, the finance, the money that's being made in these different areas. The economy raised up, the education is raised up, and health is raised up. So what more could you ask for? When I talk about these areas in uh, Honduras, only as one example, where it takes four or five hours to get from the mountain communities down to the cities themselves, you realize that, you know, how far could education get? How far could uh, the changing of lives get because of that distance? Well, through health and these projects, you see it changing quite a bit. You see now people reaching out, going up to these communities, and actually busing people back and forth to go to school, high school, to go to college, to go up and sell things because now the people up there have money. And so there's a reason now for this merchandise to be sent up into the mountains, whereas before that just wasn't available. These are some of the great things that Rotary does, some of the foundation areas. And um, again, the program is based on the Rotary Foundation cadre. I wanted to share this experience because so many of uh, Rotarians have no idea even what a foundation cadre is. Um, being an expert, quote, expert in these specific areas lends yourself to what you do. Now, I became a cadre in water and sanitation because of the fact that I'm a landscape contractor. And that profession, that trade, gave me the background and understanding of what I could do to help people out. You as Rotarians also have specific skills. Take a look at the six areas of focus. See if in fact you could specialize in one of those because that is where you could change the world. That is where you would be the largest benefit to humanity as a Rotarian because Rotarians have the tools. We have Rotary backing us up to make that effect and make that happen with us. With that, I wanted to share this with you because there's so many opportunities that we have as Rotarians. This is only one of them. And I wanted to bring that experience to you because it is an experience that I've had that will last me a lifetime. I've enjoyed it completely. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.